Assalamu alaikum. Um, my name is Nasir Zakaria. I'm a founder of uh, Executive Director of Rohingya Culture Center. Uh, I would like to thank you so much for organizing this event. And we are from Rohingya. And the Rohingya is uh, one of the minority in Burma. And I would like to share, uh, Abdul Jabbar, he want to share the history of Rohingya. So I will pass to him. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's been an honor to be here. And uh, thank you very much for having us. So uh, I just want to share about uh, who are the Rohingya and uh, what is the situation right now uh, the Rohingya situation. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Rohingya are in Afghanistan since uh, 400 AD, and then we, the Burma got independent in 1947, and then uh, in 1962, the military took power. In 19, uh, since 1962, the start of the discrimination and uh, persecution started since 1962. And, uh, and then in 2012, the officially uh, genocide taken, uh, started. In, in <clears throat> 1987, 1982, there is a citizenship law that is uh, excluded uh, the Rohingya uh, as an ethnic group in Burma and also <clears throat> confiscated our citizenship right. Until now, we, we don't have a right as a citizen of uh, Burma. We don't have any citizenship in Burma. In, uh, and then uh, the, the genocide is still taking place in Burma, and until now, uh, nothing changed. None of the country or international organization able to resolve uh, this uh, issue and uh, able to stop the genocide. Um, we one of the minority ethnic group in Burma, uh, one of the most persecuted minority on the planet, and. Uh, our people are still suffering. We have more than one million refugees in Bangladesh refugee camp. We have 150 in in Malaysia is living there, and we have in in Indonesia, Thailand, neighbor country. So the our our people are suffering, and then the genocide is still taking place. The house is uh, burning down. Uh, people are burning, uh, killed with the fire, and and you know, so people try to escape from the from the genocide. They took a, a small boat, try to cross the river to the Bangladesh, and they took a ship to try to uh, leave to the to Malaysia, and then they end up in the Thailand, and they will be arrested. Uh, the people are detained in Thailand. Uh, so that is our current situation. Alhamdulillah, I, I, I'm able to resettle in 2012. So I was uh, in, in Chicago and we established a Rohingya Culture Center in 2016 and we, we give service to all the community. And then uh, uh, regarding the, 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 our community center, so I would like to pass uh, Sarah. She will be explaining more in detail. Thank you for having us. Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Peugeot and I'm the Assistant Director at the Rohingya Culture Center. I've had the privilege of working with the Rohingya starting in 2019 and then I've been working at the Rohingya Culture Center since 2020. The Rohingya Culture Center is a very unique organization. The, um, I'd say the most special, one of the most special things about the organization is it's refu Rohingya Refugee Ran and Rohingya Refugee Founded. Um, so 80% of the staff there are Rohingya and they can speak the languages to communicate with the community. Um, this is this is really rare with refugee organizations. Typically it's not somebody from the community who is serving the community. In this is instance, um, our, our leaders at the organization know what the community members need because it's their community. So RCC started in 2016 because the Rohingya were falling through the cracks in resettlement. Resettlement is uh, understaffed, they're overworked, and they're underpaid. 
So the system has some flaws in it. Um, so many of the Rohingya were falling through the cracks. They, they, you know, it was very difficult. They came pre-literate. They didn't speak English, so they were they were difficult. Um, they had a difficult time. So when Nasir opened RCC, they originally didn't start to, they didn't open with the idea of having case management, but case management is our largest program at RCC, especially since the pandemic. So with the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, RCC made the choice to stay open because most of the community is preliterate and can't do can't do um, case management over text or over emails. They need to be there in person and have a language they understand to successfully have case management. So many of the community members, they lost their jobs during that time. So RCC stayed open. Nasir and Abdul Jabbar were there to help community members with unemployment and other services. So with case management, there's really many services that are involved in that. There's employment, there's public benefits, medical, um, there's, there's more in-depth case management as well, such as if, if somebody has an issue, they're able to help with that. If somebody wants to buy a car and they know they might get taken advantage of because they, they don't have the English skills to do that, our case managers can help them with that. They can also tell them, this is a bill, this is junk mail, and then help them pay the bills. Um, our next program that we have that started during the pandemic was health support. We are very fortunate to be vaccinated with healthcare providers because we were in person. Then our community was able to be vaccinated at the center. So we opened that up to the greater community. So it, it's, you know, all of our services are available to anybody regardless of background. Um, but people were able to get COVID vaccines. Then we had flu vaccines. We do we do hepatitis B screenings. We have mental health workshops. So it's it's really grown a lot in the past few years. Our next programs that I'm going to talk about are ESL classes, English as a Second Language, and citizenship classes. These are focused and they're really they were created to assist preliterate students, preliterate adult students. So with ESL, they learn the skills to speak, read, and write in English. And then once they finish that, they can go into citizenship class and become citizens. So at the end of 2022, we had over 100 U.S. citizens or people who became U.S. citizens in the community, which was really exciting. The rest of our programs are really youth focused. So the youth play a very, a very interesting role in the community and a very difficult role. If you're 16 and you are resettled into the United States, regardless of your your academic history or your language, you're still going into high school. So a lot of our students and our, um, our youth in the community were falling behind. So of course we have religious education for the students and that's Monday through Friday. We also offer academic support Monday through Friday. So we have tutors who come in and support students in reading, writing, studying, homework, um, or just a safe place to stay while parents are working. We also have soccer teams and we have youth club. So we focus on the importance of education and giving back to the community. So I think an important thing to note with our youth club and focusing on education, we now have what four college graduates in the Rohingya community in Chicago. So it's, it's very exciting. Um, all this being said, you know, we, we assist the Rohingya in Chicago, but we're able to assist the Rohingya abroad through donations and anybody who comes in our doors. So now I'm going to pass it back to Nasir. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yes, uh, thank you Sarah for explaining about things. So Rohingya is a unread language. So Rohingya community is separate around the world because of we are con we have country now we are stateless they keep out they keeping out our people so today we we Rohingya American we are boys for our community we try our best to make 
better life for community. So I will go my uh, my little bit of my history. <clears throat> uh, I left country 1994 because of portraying, because of uh, torture. I'm I was I say my own my country, and I left countries. Uh, is so dangerous because of my family, my of all myself is so dangerous because of that. And 1994, I go to Bangladesh, Bangladesh to Thailand, Thailand to Malaysia. So Malaysia is Bangladesh also unsafe because of we don't have any document, any passport. Thailand also same thing, no passport, no document. So we, as a Rohingya, I myself, we are lo like swimming, swimming cross border, like we want to find safe place. And finally, we, I, I, I will be able to stay in Malaysia. I spent almost 14 years. And 2013, I arrived in resettlement agency. I arrived in Chicago, 2013. And 2013, I don't speak English, and I don't know how to write, how to read. And <clears throat> also, same like my community. It was 2013 is 250 family, and 250 family, everyone need help. So we try our best to make something different for community, uh, like open a space for gathering, for prayer room, and you know, help each other. So a space is so important for as a community because in Chicago, nearby, our community live. They have every mo others community. They have own space, own place. They will get help, and we are as in one new refugee community. We don't have a space. It was so difficult for us because everything new, and you know uh, the the burial language. So Alhamdulillah, so with, uh, I mean, with my friends, the community members, we try collect money, $10 each family, but it's not good through because they, every family, they have job, they go to work, they will be get a small salary, like 1600 they pay rent, utility bill, rent, rent is 1400 they got 1700 1600 salary is not enough so alhamdulillah so we try almost two years mm -hmm. and finally zakat foundation of america they were helping us to open a space and open a space and they told me that go help your community and they're teaching us how to run organization and this is so big help from the Zakat Foundation because of we are as a Rohingya refugee minority, we need uh, we need a space almost yeah I mean uh, looking for almost two years. So when we get a space, so we uh, as a Rohingya community. We don't know how to run, new everything for us. So we have good, good people with our in area. It's like so many volunteers come, get help. And we have also our board members, like one of the teacher, one of the doctor. They have education. They, have, they know how to uh, run organization. They're helping us. So Alhamdulillah, finally, with uh, everyone together, make team. And until today, we are non-stop helping community, not only Rohingya community, everybody who 
we open door for everybody we welcome everybody and we help and it's, it's so important for us the rohingya people every every person every people they have hope dream when they have citizen they want to go meet their family they want to go their relative they want to go umrah haji everyone is dream also my dream same thing uh, when i i got citizen uh, i got passport so i would like to go meet my uh, relative and i can go meet my family because it's so dangerous in burma and i mean many community they have hope and dream everyone like to go visit their own family so because of that we very hard work supporting education to open a citizenship class and when they learn english so they will be uh test citizen they will be passed and then when they pass they get citizen so and yeah very important for us for the community uh the rcc is uh, rcc is as a new home and is every everyone feel that uh, we have a space not only this country around the world who rohingya people say that or in in united state we have rohingya community and rohingya culture center as a our identity uh, i mean as they can proudly say in usa we have rohingya name yeah so this is uh, i mean i would like to share that so in, if anyone any question so i will happy to answer can you say about the So I'm going to talk about a few um, our needs at RCC and our hopes for the future. So RCC has a very small space. We we run all of our programs in this space, and we don't have, you know, we don't have enough room. We have more children who'd like to sign up for religious education, but we don't have enough room. So that's on hold right now. We have more students who want to sign up for classes, but we don't have the classroom space. Uh, we have two main rooms at RCC where case management takes place in the same room as uh, ESL and citizenship. And then in the evening when the youth are all there, there's, there's just simply not enough space. So we are very fortunate to receive a grant to purchase a space, and we're very excited for this. However, the building we found, we um, are a few hundred dollars, a hundred thousand dollars short. So we are, we are looking to, um, to support ourselves in, in making this purchase of a space. Um, so if you know, anybody's interested in supporting RCC, every, every penny that's donated to RCC goes directly towards the community, um, whether it's through services or space. So if you're interested, our website is rccchicago.org. We also have Zell. Um, yeah, but but something else I wanted to mention why another reason space is so important. You know, we're we're in Chicago where we have four seasons, and it's very um, you never know what the next day is going to bring with the weather. So I've been at RCC for three years now, and I've seen our our annual outdoor Eid prayer three times held outside in our neighboring parking lot. The concern we have is next year we aren't able to do that prayer outside because it's going to be so cold. Um, so we're, we're really, we're hoping and praying that our space is ready by that time. And yes, if, if there's any questions, um, feel free to ask. <clears throat> and today uh, I would like to thank you so much again for inviting us 
and give chance to talk in front of you. We, as the Rohingya refugee and Rohingya community, we would like to stand, stand by self for community to raise voice for community. And it's important spaces, own space is so important, and we can do culturally uh, and culture and like activities to our children, rem reminding who they are, where they come from, and because of that, the smallest space is not work. We are right now more than 600 family live in that area. So, and, and we would like to have own space. So because of that, we need your help, your support. Uh, and so this is, we are new as a new brother, new community and supporting us, we need uh, your help. Thank you so much. I hope uh, you will be visiting rccchicago.org. Thank you so much. If any questions, so inshallah, so we'll happy be happy to be answered. I uh, just want to mention about the uh, Rohingya situation uh, uh, around the globe and the situation is still dire in, in, in Burma and uh, uh, our people are still suffering in, in Burma and, and in, in the same time in uh, Bangladesh refugee came. There is more than um, more than million uh, the in refugee came, and the recently international aid uh, announced that there will be a cut off the ration to <clears throat> ten dollars to seven dollars monthly for family. It will be very very hard for the for the Rohingya people who are. Uh, limited food and you know <clears throat> at the same time uh, so they don't have any health care access and education access so our upcoming generation they don't have any future in the refugee camp because due to the lack of education so we we really require uh, a brother and sister who are listening to us today and raise your voice to the you are uh, local government, state senator, and talk to the uh, your uh, governor, your mayor, uh, your representative, and 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 to take immediate action against Burma Burma government to stop the ongoing genocide. At the same time, uh, the, our people able to go home with the. Uh, with the dignity and the, uh, the citizenship right as a, as the ethnic of Rohingya, so we we as a community of uh, Chicago, we Rohingya community of Chicago, we request the our uh, government, the our government, the government of the United States to take immediate action and do something for Rohingya people, because now as we know. So there's war going on in in in, in Russia, between Russia and the Ukraine. Uh, most of the government, like international community, focus on that, but we feel we live behind. And the Rohingya situation, and Rohingya genocide, and it's take take started since 1962 until now. It is still ongoing. On. There is no uh, action taken. No strong action taken against uh, Burmese uh, uh, 
government against who committed genocide. So we need justice for, for our people. Uh, as I'm a Rohingya, I'm in the United States, I'm American, Rohingya American, but my heart is still back in for my country. I, I still feel about my, my people who are still in, in, in refugee camp, who are still in Burma. So people are really suffering back in Burma and the refugee camp. We need your support, brother and sister, and to raise your voice and to do something about, do something for Rohingya, to stop, immediately stop the genocide and and also help our brother and sister who are in, 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 in the refugee camp. So thank you very much for having us today and uh, allow us to share our uh, personal uh, story and our ex experience and also our situation in Burma and in other country. Thank you. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you both for sharing your stories. I think through this, we can all understand that this isn't just an issue in Chicago. It's not just an issue in the Muslim community. It's a complex international humanitarian issue that's happening. Um, so like Abdul-Jabbar said, raise your voices to bring attention to what's happening to the Rohingya. Thank you.